What is up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. On today's video, guys, I'm gonna be talking about lighting. It is such a complex topic, but it's something that if you are in the interior design industry, you must know how to master. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So when you are choosing lighting for interior design, one of the questions that everyone asks themselves is, where do I even begin? The first thing you need to know is you need to figure out what type of lighting you need for each room. In interior design and lighting design, we categorize lighting in four types. General lighting, accent lighting, task lighting, and decorative lighting. General lighting is used to light up a room in a uniform way and provide you with the safe walkthrough in the space. We basically achieve this by using recessed lighting fixtures. Sometimes they are called pot lights or can lights. Pot lights are installed on the ceiling and I'm sure you are very familiar with them because they are installed basically everywhere. Now, general lighting goes everywhere. No matter what type of space you are designing, you need some sort of general lighting for that space. But a lot of the times general lighting is just not enough. And a lot of the times, if you don't use other types of lighting, the room is gonna look very plain and very simple, which is why we implement decorative lighting, task lighting, and also accent lighting. So task lighting, as the word says, is used to illuminate a working surface where a task is being performed. So some places where you would need this type of lighting would be, for example, in the kitchen. If you are chopping vegetables, for example, um, you would typically have some sort of task lighting to better illuminate uh, the countertop. That could be either a puck light, which are like recessed lights that are tiny and they are installed um, under the upper cabinets in your kitchen. Or you can also have a pendant on the kitchen island that illuminates directly on your kitchen island. Other types of task lighting would be, for example, when you are working on your desk, you would need some sort of uh, task lighting to illuminate uh, that surface. So we typically use table lamps. Another example would be for reading. Uh, so depending where you are reading at, if you are at a library or if you're like sitting on a sofa, you would need some sort of illumination that could be either a table lamp or even a floor lamp. Another example where we use task lighting is for the bathroom because that's the place where normally you would apply makeup on. Not only you need your recess lightings on the ceiling, but you also need another type of illumination such as sconces or even pendants that are better for illumination near the mirror. So you get the point, task lighting is lighting that is close enough to illuminate a task that is being done. So we also have accent lighting, which is used to light up a object or a feature in an interior space. In interior spaces, a feature could be so many things. It could be artwork uh, or a feature wall or a textured wall or anything that you wanna bring um, your attention to. So accent lighting fixtures could be either track lighting or you can also use recessed pot lights that are directional, similar to the ones that you use for general lighting, but these ones actually can tilt to aim towards the feature that you want to illuminate. And of course, we also have decorative lighting, which to me are like the jewelry of the home. And personally, they are my favorite type of lighting fixtures. So unlike the other types of lighting that I just talked about, which main function is to illuminate a room or a space, the function of this type of lighting is to decorate a space. So there are many types of decorative lighting fixtures. Some examples would be a chandelier, a pendant, um, a sconce, a linear lighting fixture, a flush mount, etc. So although you can use decorative lighting anywhere in your home, you typically will only see them in the most important rooms of the home. So that would typically be uh, the living room or the dining room, at the kitchen, sometimes the bedroom or the master bedroom. 
and I've also seen them in washrooms that are very high-end uh, in suites. I would say that this type of lighting is really what finishes up a space. Okay, so those were all the lighting types that interior designers use to finish up a space. And one thing that you should know is that it is okay to use more than one lighting type uh, within a space. And this is actually always recommended by interior designers and by lighting designers. Not every room will need all four types of lighting, but using common sense is what works best. So just think about the places that need illumination. What are the tasks that are gonna be done in that room, in those surfaces, and based on the activities that will be performed in that specific space, you can start to determine which types of lighting fixtures you will need for that room. So placement and quantity is also very important when you are choosing your lighting fixtures. And although there are not any uh, specific rules of thumb, there are general guidelines that you want to make sure that you know to better place your lighting. For general lighting, for which we use recess spotlights, each spotlight should be evenly distributed uh, within the room. And try to always align them vertically and also horizontally. You basically want to create sort of like a grid on the ceiling and I normally space them out five feet from each other but this really depends. Some people do three feet, four feet. Um, there's no specific rule of how to do it. Task lighting is way more flexible when it comes to placement. So for example for under cabinet lighting um, in the kitchen uh, some designers will recommend spacing them six to ten inches apart but I've also seen uh, some puck lights spaced out as little as three inches apart. For pendants above a kitchen island, there is no rule of how many you should have. This really depends on the size of your kitchen island and also on the size of your um, lighting fixture. So smaller pendants, it makes more sense to have more of them on the kitchen island. If you have like a huge pendant, then you probably only wanna have one or two. I've seen three, which is kind of like um, a rule of thumb, but it really depends. And also two uh, on the kitchen island is something that it's very trendy. For bathroom task lighting, for which we use sconces, they are typically placed 65 to 7 inches above the floor. If the users of that washroom are taller or shorter, those heights can also be adjusted. And because you will normally have two wall sconces on each side, the distance between those two sconces are typically 36 to 40 inches. Now for accent lighting, if you have like a huge piece of artwork, then you would probably need two or three uh, pot lights to light up that object but if you have like a smaller one or like a medium one maybe two of them would be enough this really depends on what are you lighting up and this will actually determine how many lighting fixtures you will need and finally decorative lighting is probably the easiest one to place because normally if you have like a huge chandelier then you would only have one chandelier in the center of the room so you only want to make sure that that lighting fixture is actually centered on that room or center uh, within the furniture pieces that are gonna be uh, surrounding it. Now for larger rooms, you probably wanna have two lighting fixtures instead of one, but like I said, it all depends on the size of your space. So that was my video on lighting. There's actually way more things that I do wanna share with you about lighting. So if you want a second part of this video, let me know down in the comments. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, do not forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.